Hey guys. Ooh. I have a lot of lights in the background. It feels like Christmas, but it's because it's a celebration. So, um, I have a lot of stuff to explain. Uh, I got just so impulsive, like, doing the video yesterday. I mean, today, like, the previous video. The, the crossover, because I... Well, I spent the Sunday studying, right? And I... I want to learn biblical history to know like the bible basically the scriptures so the word of god the scriptures to remind myself of it's basically like a sword it's like a weapon the scriptures are so powerful the words are so powerful so i want to know more and i feel like it's in the genes also because my grandpa was a pastor and my dad knows the bible and i'm like that's my turn now right i need to carry the legacy <laughs> so it's just a lot you know and i who is this study um i wanted to dig more in depth to some things that I mentioned uh, in the video, previous video. The clocks are turning. We are in the Passover season. And I feel, I feel it's so strong that something so big is about to happen. <laughs> we don't see it. Why we don't see it? Because there's a cloud in front of us on purpose on purpose why because the israelites when they got out of egypt god was guiding them with what <laughs> with a cloud god was guiding them with the cloud they couldn't see when they got at the red sea they were in front of the red sea they couldn't see after the red sea the promised land what was there they couldn't see it they just they were just following moses moses was the one the deliverer that god called to deliver people and he was taking all the hits like if you didn't understand something about god like he was taking all the hits like that's what happens when you're called to be a deliverer like it's different than salvation salvation is different but when god chooses you for a specific purpose either you do it god's way either you don't do it at all and that's that's the first thing thing i want to mention that in order to know the right thing to do because when you are called for something your decisions are important and i have people in church telling me that it's not about your decision don't worry about your decision it's about how you are your state of being your relationship with god yes people some people are called to have a passive relationship with god just them and god and very nice clean flowery flowery not involving anybody like just them and god that was like but in the prayers in the bible it's not your god it's our god it's god for everyone it's not just your individual god and you pray for your salvation and you pray for your little thing not caring about the rest because that's opposite to jesus character jesus character was leaving the 99 for the one that was lost that's god's character leaving the 99 for the one and you worry about your personal relationship with god and how he guides you and you don't need to do anything in decision just be nice and just good do good things good deeds and live your church life nicely no that's not about salvation. You, We're not talking about salvation here. You are saved. If you believe that Christ is king and stuff like that and all that, you are saved. But here is about if you are called for something. If you're called for something, you can't play around with your decisions. You can't take them easily. You can't be like, whatever. Because, you know, the people of Israel choose to not believe in the promised land that it was there 
And God, what did they... <clears throat> God's promise over your life will happen. God's word never comes back void, the Bible says. If God speaks something for his glory, for his reputation, it will never come back void. It will happen. Now, the thing is, the duration, how long it will happen, when it will happen, that depends sometimes on you and your faith. Because people of Israel didn't believe in the promised land and God made them roam around 40 years until they believed it. You don't believe it? Okay, I'm not going to show you. And it says here, I said it in another video. If you're thinking about the past land where you were in, you may have an opportunity to return there because you're thinking about it. But God would be ashamed to be called your God if you don't even look ahead at what he promised you because his promises were so big and you look behind instead of looking ahead. Hebrews 11, 14, 16. For it's impossible to please God without faith for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him Hebrews 11 1 Hebrews 11 6 so People of Israel. Sorry, God, I, I lost my track of thought though. I derived a little bit and getting angry at like some church people. But <clears throat> I'm telling you, in this season, God is demolishing everything that is not at his standards. Everything that is not built like he said so churches will fall and other churches will rise god is reconnecting the body of christ differently than in the past what's not authentic what's not coming instructed from god will fall <laughs> you're seeing it already and why I'm saying that something big is about to happen because it's never it's never been like this before. It's never been like this. The spirit was never so strong before in the past 10 years. It's like it's like everywhere people are have been prepared for years for this thing that is about to happen and <laughs> do you know how many years Esther waited before even knowing why she was married with a king that was not even from her religion he was not from her religion she married somebody who didn't know, didn't serve her God, and she didn't know why. The purpose. Do you think she was happy to hide her identity? For, because her uncle told her for six, five, six years, her identity was not just Jewish, was a race was a nationality, was a religion, was an ethnicity. It was everything being Jewish. It was the court and it was a pride moment. It was, it was like something that you were proud of to be Jewish. It was something worth being proud of and she had to hide it for so long without knowing that when she finally got the chance to reveal itself, 
to reveal her, reveal her identity. Although it was scary, she was willing to die for it. Have you waited long enough to be able to die for the thing that you've been waiting on? Because you know, a lot of times I was like, this is crazy, like, this not gonna make sense, like, why am I even bothering with this, like, why am I even... That's what the Bible meant when they said that you will be persecuted or for your faith and that like people will not like you and stuff because i was like first i was like everybody likes me like nobody didn't like me because i'm christian like nobody ever had a problem with that you know but what it actually means is that it has a problem when all you're thinking about is that it's god and it's like and you look abnormal to be like spending the whole day studying the scriptures and studying bible history and like trying to get his word and trying to know what he says and what he says that you have to do. And that's the first thing that I wanted to say is that without knowing the scriptures, you don't know God's character. And if you don't know God's character, you make it your own way. You make your own moral co um, code of morals. You pick up stuff from the Bible, like, I should do this, I should eat this, I should do that. But you don't know God's character. You haven't studied God's character enough. And only if you know God's character, you know what's from God and what's from not. What's not from God and you know the de decisions to make. Because ultimately, if God has a promise over your life, that, that's what I wanted to say in the beginning, way back. If God has a promise over your life, it will happen. It's just a matter of when. And the matter of when can depend on you. Why? Whether you believe it or not. Why? Because it is impossible to please God without faith. Because God likes it when you have faith without seeing anything. And faith comes by hearing. I run out of space in my phone, so I have to continue separately now. Uh, so I was saying, why? Because God likes us, likes it when people have faith, obviously. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And... The second thing I wanted to say is that when I said either you do it God's way, either you don't do it at all, this is so typical to of God's character. He gives freedom of choice, of course, but if he has a plan for a humanity, for a race, for a country, for a city, for a town, for a family. Whether you accept the promise over your life or not, it will still come to pass. Why? Esther's uncle, Mordecai, told her to go to the king and to tell the king that she is Hebrew from the Hebrew people. She is what she is and that her people will perish and to seek the king's Xerxes mercy and reveal her identity. She was first afraid. And what did Mordecai say? He said, if you don't do it, God will still save the people of Israel, even without Esther. If you don't do it, God will raise another one. God will have somebody else do it. And what did Mar um, Mordecai say? And you, Esther, will perish along with the king. Because who knows, in the famous verse, if you haven't been made for such a time as this. So she had the choice, though. You had a choice, though. At some point in your life, you have a choice. 
at some point in your life you have a choice to either do it god's way or don't do it and consequences follow because if at the end of your obedience there's a whole nation saved or there's a whole it can go so tiny or so big you don't see it you know but at the end of your obedience there's a school that was changed because of your obedience there is a family that was changed there was like a church that was changed there was at the end of your obedience and god has a plan for those people and he always accomplishes plans through people through his servants so if you don't he will convince another one He raised up Moses on purpose, like from the beginning of the, it's, um, what chapter was it? Exodus 8 or 4, I can't remember, when it said that God said to Moses, you have been born for such a time as this, you have been born, he, he planned that all along. And there's something I wanted to say about Moses too, you know. Because I was checking on what faith is in Hebrews. And so by faith, Moses was hidden three months because they saw the child was beautiful. Now, there's a lot of people preaching about like how desperate Moses' mom was to put him on the river, you know. And like I heard preachings in church about how desperate the mom could must have been to like put him in the river like with the crocodiles hoping because like he was going to die like in the rivers but that was like a big leap of faith yes it's true on that side of the story it was leap of faith to put him in the basket in the river i don't know what kind of river that is if there were crocodiles or not like in the movies but bible says because they saw the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's verdict and that's hebrew eleven twenty three for your reference they were not afraid of him being killed because the child was beautiful how can you know a child is beautiful i don't know but he was beautiful at three months old by faith moses chose to not be treated as son of aaron's of aaron's daughter by faith rahab the prostitute did not perish because she helped the spies. God loves faith. And for as long as I can remember, I was like thinking, I was being double minded and be like, my sensory information doesn't show me that this is right thing to do. Cause like you got this and you got this and you got this obstacle and you got this and you have the bills and you have no salary and you have this. <laughs> And my, all the sensory information, five senses, was suppressed and was like, was showing and was making me anxious, actually, that, oh my lord, there are so many things to do, like, this is never going to happen, you know, but if you don't, and that's what, they failed to believe it, and therefore they didn't see it be done to you according to your belief so if you're standing still exodus 14 14 perseverance makes you move makes god move mountains for you because you're not turning around the mountains you're moving it guys you're not crazy the clocks have changed it is not going to be the same the long-awaited Passover is here. We're crossing into the promised land. How long does it take to cross? It took them six hours only. God loves his celebrations. And why I'm saying there's going to be a big thing happening because... I think Easter is one of God's favorite celebrations, like for sure, pretty much sure about that. 
And this Easter, he has promised so many things to so many people. Like God, if God says something, it will come to pass for his glory, for his reputation, for his lion's side. This Easter is a big promised land. People of Israel couldn't see it because there was a cloud in front of them. But the waters were on both sides when they crossed. It didn't touch them. It, did, it won't touch you. You will be like protected in a shield and whatever outside pressure, whatever like, it's not gonna touch you. You're gonna go in you're gonna go in your promised land. You're gonna go to that job you waited for. You're gonna go into that covenant you're waited for. You're gonna become a mother. You're going to have your business working, whatnot. You are going to enter in the promised land without any door shutting on you when it's God who opens the door and not you. No man can shut what God opens. And no man can open what God shuts. Don't don't fight back, please. Don't fight back. So easy. It's not really easy, but it's quite when you have God on your side, like life is easier. Like life is easier. It's just that. Because he's carrying the burden, but you still, you still need, you still need to study a lot. You still need to be able to discern God's word, to discern God's voice. He, you still need to be prepared. Standing still is also being prepared. You need to be like, how do you call that? Ugh. I don't know how to call that. Stretched. So then he, when he releases you, you're ready to go in whatever direction. You have been stretched. You have been prepared. It was a stretchy preparation. But when he lets you go and he says go, whatever it's pointing at, you are ready and going fast. Like you're not willing, you're willing to die for it. on both sides waters and also God was collaborating with Moses to trick Pharaoh they were like friends <laughs> I'm gonna harden Pharaoh's heart so that he thinks blah 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 so he will think that you don't know that he's following you also I said before Esther had to wait five to six years to see why she was there like to see why she has been brought there. You're gonna enter a relationship, you're gonna enter a marriage, you will not know until later what you guys were called to do. It's not gonna come like that, butterflies and flowers ready to go. Yes, when, God's, when God accelerates things, he truly accelerates things and you're not expecting it and he loves surprising you. God loves surprising you which is really cool but don't expect to be like i know you know you don't know but the only way to know is learning god's character learning how he does things he likes his order yeah so that was it guys it's a little bit messy i know one thing I wanted to say, I'm sorry, I think I think God wasn't happy though, that I kind of like switch in between personalities and like faith walk because I feel like he's kind of showing me the direction to go towards and it's just that I had some like old recordings and stuff and I still do have and I wanted to post but it was it was very like out of the blue inappropriate like it was not the right thing to do i know and i'm s i'm sorry for like 
still switching in between callings or still switching in between like my research you know because i know god gave me like knowledge to do research in some areas and stuff and um i know he will use it you know and he will definitely use it for his glory and now it's mostly i, I want to learn bible history you know because now i know everything about personality so it's, it's gonna take that one will take a break and i'm i'm sorry if that confused you though um but yeah that was the message for today expect surprises expect surprises as we enter april 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 is the 8th month of my Worthy Healing Academy. 8 month. 7 have passed. 7. 7 perfect months of preparation have passed. The 8th month is the month of new beginnings. 8 is the number of new beginnings. The other Sunday, I, I collected some flowers in the park. And I was like, I'm going to take five. Because five means grace. And I want grace. I need grace over this, like, relationship. Over this covenant. There needs to be grace. And I picked five. And they hold me for a whole week. Like, they're still here. God speaks through the little things. Like if you feel like God is telling you somehow, go pick five flowers. It might it might be as basic and silly as that. It might be so like out of like what whatever, like out of like when God tells you something and you feel like you like that's between you and him, it's like a conversation. Okay, God, I'm gonna do it he likes it and then he he put he makes you write it down and then you <sighs> this is so amazing guys i wish you understood what i mean anyway i'm excited i'm excited i'm exhausted from working 50 hours but i'm excited i'm gonna leave this here because it's getting long so bye bye i'll see you next weekend